The first thing that I would like people to do is to read this out. Lalichi Lalat. Anybody who can, who offers, let this not be an imposition. Yeah, Bhavya? Khalu Khalu. Lalachi Lalat. Rupert. Lalachi Lalat. Bilalat Dwar Dwar Deen. Badan Malin. Man Mite Na Visudan. Takat Sarad Kai Biba Kai Uchakachu. Dole Lol Buja the Sabbath the Dol Tur. Piase Huna Pave Bari. Bukena Chanak Chari. Jahat Aharan Pahar Dari Kurana. So Koagar Duk Bar Baro Tolo Jan. Jolo Devi Drave Nabhavani and the Hood. बहुत बढ़िया अब आप पढ़िए तब आप पढ़िए नहीं आप पढ़िए नहीं नहीं मैं मैं तो शायद पढ़ सकता हूँ but you're going to read no no you're going to read this one the लाले ची लाला ते बेले लात द्वारे द्वारे दीने बदन मलीने मने मिटाए ना बसुर ना ताकत सराद के बेबाह के उछाह के शू डोले डोले पूछे तो सब तो डोले दूर ना प्यासे हूँ न पावे बारी भूखे न चनक चारी चाहे तो आहार न पहार दारी कूरना सुख को अगार दुख भार भरो तौलों जन जौलों देवी द्रवे न भवानी अन्न पूरना Not that I understand it. It's 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 a tough one. हाँ सुनाइए क्या क्या रहा Somebody give us a translation. Hmm. <coughs> Gluttonous gluttons, wretchedly wine, from door to door in squalid, sorrowful mind, seeking funerals, weddings, or other festivities to feed, wildly wandering, aimlessly inquiring at each note of the clarion or drum's beat. No water to quench when thirsty, not even four grains of lentils to pacify the hungry. Covetous of a mountain of food when there is not even a morsel to eat. Sorrow and grief will outweigh everything until Goddess Annapurna and Bhavani melt with their embrace. Mm -hmm. इसमें दो तीन चीजें मुझे बिल्कुल नहीं आती हैं कोई समझा दे मुझे फिर आगे बढ़ा जाए something that don't even literally understand I have to thank my grandfather for this you phone I I called him he explained things to me in Hindi and then I translated can we have his number he 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 brought he got his own कविता वाली हाँ and you know we had good conversation on this oh I see he got his कविता वाली and looked it up I mean, he has his Kavitavali in his bookshelf. No, he didn't say that, son, you went to Texas. I said, I'm going to take five minutes to call Kavitavali. Okay, right. Then we'll talk. You know, what is Thurana? Fourth line. It's a rhyme word, huh? It doesn't mean anything. No, it means... So he is something kind of trumpet word, but I don't think there is such a word as Turana. Yeah, I've never come across it. I mean, that doesn't mean anything, but Turana is a problem. Similarly, the next line, Dari Kurana, the next rhyme, Dari Kurana. Kurana is not Kaur, is it? Well, the Gita Press, the one who was written in the Gita Press, Kurana was written. Kurana. Look, the Patantar came. This doesn't, this, because the editor must have thought it doesn't make sense, there's a variant. It's the textual. Kurana. Kurana means? They said where they are playing. Oh. Kurana. But they... That will be Kurana is better than Kurana. Kurana is better than Kurana. But there's another possibility, which is that in Molly Williams, Kur is Bha. Dal Chabu. Where is that? In Molly Williams. Molly Williams? Yeah. Kur. Kurana. No, not as not na. Na is the negative. Acha, acha, acha. Dal bhat bhi nahi hai. Acha. Or baaki. In opposition to the mountain of food. 
एक और चीज आखिर में मैन मस्ट रिमेन ए फसाद ऑफ सोरो अगार अगार इज नॉट फसाद अगार आगार इज a huge building as a kind of store treasury is not even treasury for Brand example karagar ha huh. okay receptacle karagar is prison uh, there are uh, other agars one rajasthan rajasthan parivahan rajasthan buses just say agar at the back which means depot this bus will go to that depot at night not to the facade फसाद तो बिल्कुल गलत है दंगा फसाद तो बिल्कुल गलत है तोलो मतलब तोलना वेइंग ही इज एंटायरली रॉन्ग तोलो इज अगेंस्ट जोलो tab tak jab tak tolo jab tak oh is that what he read is that his is read that is way aur kya hai aur kya tolo means tab tak jo no jab tak because i but i have i have in my translation i've used the word way but i wasn't using it for tolo you were using it for bhar yeah ha here way is bhar but way he has load load is way uh, you're right i hadn't seen that तो ये ये सब चीजें उनको नहीं करनी चाहिए थी मैं तो कर ही नहीं सकता ऑल्शन साहब जो है इसमें आई हैव अ पर्सनल डेट ऑफ ऑफ ग्रेटिट्यूड टू ऑल्शन साहब एज यू कॉल हिम बिकॉज़ व्हेन आई वाज अप्लाइंग टू गो टू यूनिवर्सिटी फॉर माय बीए ही वाज द एडमिशन स्टूडेंट इन चर्चिल कॉलेज कैम्ब्रिज टू व्हिच आई अप्लाइड एंड ही रिफ्यूज्ड टू लेट मी इन एंड सो आई वेंट टू लंदन वेयर आई हैड अ मच बेटर टाइम I hope you do not have such debts of gratitude to any of the rest of us. Ah, Jishnu ji, you are saying something. One thing is that this human reading, the loan means wealth. Well, from the one where you buy from, 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 the one where you buy
what does roll mean there? Again, if this roll is Y, wandering Y is. It is probably referring to just the service. But in that case, neither of the meanings that we are considering now would apply. Yeah. Lochan. Ah, Lochan. Lochan is to roll hote hi hai. Wo to kapol bata rahe. Ha, so this is the description of um, the infant raft. Huh, yeah. huh. There is load and there is support. They are both there. So what does load mean then? Load like a pole to be smoking or something. Dash. Don't know how to value it. Load is not there. Load is not there. आपने आपने किया है और कितने लोगों ने किया है ये अनुवाद रूपट ने किया है और किसी ने तो मैं पहले अपना पढ़ लेता हूं उसके बाद रूपट पढ़ेंगे ये इस तरह का है मैं शायद पढ़ पाऊं शायद मैं पढ़ पाऊं <laughs> कल रात को मैंने काफी देर से लिखा था कमिटिंग वॉट एवर दे लुक एट ग्रबलिंग एज दे गो फ्रॉम डोर टू डोर दे बॉडी इज लॉन्ग अनवॉश्ड ये बदन मलीन को स्कॉलिट कहना थोड़ा ज्यादा है स्कॉलिट हैज अनदर कॉन्टेशन जस्ट हैव बिन वॉश्ड फॉर सम टाइम दे माइंड्स विद लैमेंट सोर बिसूरना इज लैमेंट टेलिंग एवरीबॉडी विद सम टीयर्स अबाउट देयर वंस डिस्ट्रेस बिसूरना एज आई अंडरस्टैंड इट Uh, I have used the word fickle, fickle for load, and I try and imply why. Fickle, they rush at each drum beat to a wedding or a funeral feast. The fickleness lies in treating the both alike. Mm -hmm. To a wedding or a funeral feast. Thirsty without a drop of water, hungry without the coarsest grain, wishing for their fill of hills of food, they fall to at, now I understand it to be dal chawal. Mm. And I think then I went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got the last line. Yeah. But I mean, last line, as I said, I understand Agar, I understand Tolo. So I'm one step or two steps ahead of all children. I hadn't even noticed that, that he'd misread that Tolo. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. I found this, uh, Jishnuji, your line here. It's uh, what it's. I had it a minute ago. That's what. Kundala Lola Kapola Niki. So it's his. It's, it's Kundala the, is Lola. Ah. Yeah, it's the earrings which are. <laughs> That's right. They are tremulous <laughs> against his cheek. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. So what is Lola? The cheek? Or Mo no, move, Lola the, is the, the Kundala. The, the, the moving, the movement of the. Yeah. Trembling movement of the, of the earrings. Of the earrings. That's what Lola is? Yeah. Lola. Sort of fickle, like. Uh -huh. Chanchal. Like, chanchal. 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 I'm just lolling about at home. <laughs> yeah. No, you have to understand that. That's why you have to understand that. That's why you have to understand that. That's why you have to understand that. Well, listen. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure if I dare because of all the things. Are you not going to be able to get the money? You're not going to be able Okay, well, I put it into a kind of uh, like Hiawatha meter type of thing <laughs> because I wanted it to yeah. have some rhythm and I've, I had to take a lot of um, liberties. So, with apologies to Tulsidas and all those present. <laughs> <laughs> Craving, yearning, slaves to longing, doleful faces, doorway thronging, wretched, ever racked with hunger, pacing, facing endless pain. Seeking out some wedding eating, funeral or festive feasting, restlessly they wander, wonder, where's that pipe and drum again? Thirst they might, but find no water, nor a bite to fight their hunger. Piles of food they long to plunder, bowl is empty, shelf is bare. Load of grief and freight of sorrow weigh upon them till the time when, gracious God, goddess, gracious goddess, plenitude shall feed them as she heeds their prayer. Wow. But it's, 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 it cuts a lot of corners. Gavat. Gavat. This is, there are two things about it. One, it's a poem. Two, it's magic. 
<laughs> it's a, it creates its own effect in such a big way. And it's the poem standing on its own two feet. Sorry, eight feet. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. And he does he has done it time and again. I don't know how many of you have seen how many unpublished translations of his. I don't know why he refuses to publish them. But his Bihari translations are absolutely supernatural. <laughs> They're so good. <laughs> and so are so many others. And the way he the way he expounds the practice of translating like that. There's one particular comparison with uh, how the metaphysical poets went about their, composing their poems and their near contemporaries, Bihari and the metaphysical poets. Same kind of poetics, comparable poetics and method. So that's, that's an amazing insight through his translations, not even, without theory, without long articles that he offers, just through his practice. Let's move on quickly to the last one. <laughs> <laughs> now you're embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. uh, should I give you the check now or later? <laughs> <laughs> so do you have yeah. to explain something about your mystery piece? Yeah, yeah. You know, these are three versions. And the first question to ask is, which version do you think is the best? Third one. No, one, one moment. One. <laughs> we'll, do it, we'll do it a bit systematically. Fourth one. <laughs> I also translated them into Hindi. Uh -huh. Have you? Into English. Hindi. No, no. She's English. Hindi. So English with a hair. I have a disadvantage. My grandfather died in 1960. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure he would have been much help anyway. <laughs> heart -lightning? You've seen his photograph. <laughs> heart lightning? <laughs> How many of you have, I a don't think people were expected to do that, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you understood this exercise, there are no instructions or anything, to mean that you also have to translate it into Hindi? I didn't. You know, you, only you did. Only you have translated this into Hindi or composed the Hindi version. No? Yeah, but because I didn't know that I was supposed to do it. No, no, you were not supposed to do it. You've <laughs> broken the rules. I didn't know that you told me that I didn't know Hindi. That's why I didn't know that. No, he did it for you. In front of everyone. So what do you do? What do you need to say? You know, this, this began... I've enjoyed this. Wherever, in, on two or three earlier occasions, I've used this. There are three versions. And... The first question that I'll ask, and I'll ask it by asking you to raise your hands for A, and after that for B, and after that for C. Don't vote twice, <laughs> just once. But do vote for one or the other. Don't abstain. You can have a quick look again, and then after 30 seconds, I'll ask you just this simple question. So is there a Hindi passage associated because without knowing that, I can't vote. No, no, no. First vote will be the same way. Later, there will be another vote. First vote will be the same way. In Lok Sabha, we will see it. In Rajya Sabha, we will see it. All right. How many of you are voting for A? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. How many of you are voting for B? None at all. How many of you are voting for C? One, two, three. Three. All right, me too. Four. Oh. Now, this is a bit of a cheat. But before that... No. <laughs> <laughs> before that, we'll provide you with two Hindi versions. One of which... <laughs> Bhavya has just composed, and the other I have. You have composed? Yeah. Which version? Teen version. You have done three Hindi. Who did you vote? C. C. So, you will read C. Neeli Dharidhar Razai ne pure bistar ko apni leher jaisi chhayadar wadiyon aur mulayam neeli pahadiyon mein dhak diya tha. Bas. Aadha to reh gaya. Oh, woh ruya wala. I am a Hindi. 
पूरे बिस्तर में फैली नीले चारखाने वाली रजाई की परवल श्रृंखला की ऊंची चोटियों और छाँ भरी घाटियों के नरम गरम अंधेरे में लिपटी पेट के बल लेटी पूरी पसरी रुईया अभी सो रही थी जय हो ना दिस इज नॉट द ओरिजिनल एज आई सेड आई कम्पोज दैट and i'll tell you what the i wish i could tell you what the original is the original is in turkish oh. <laughs> is written by orhan pamuk oh and these are three versions and you don't read turkish so you read it no despite my stint in istanbul so he wrote it in english not <laughs> i don't know and this came to my attention because i was in istanbul because there was a translation student there who shared this with me a young lady who is working on pamuk and rushdi yep so the interesting thing about this is b is not actually a translation b is a pre translation it follows literally the syntax oh. and all the rest of it uh -huh. yeah so b will not even call itself a translation it's a shadow of the turkish syntax this is by the way let me just say this is the way ramanujan shows how to break down a sangam poem hmm. hmm. yeah exactly yeah. like this yeah sure first to follow exactly in the footsteps then do what you like yeah uh, in fact victor kiernan does something like this to fans <laughs> yes, yeah yes. right the strange thing was that in tino versions ko padhne ke baad pehle maine hindi wala likha uske baad jab iska angrezi mein translation kar rahi thi to maine usko kavita form mein likha kyunki mujhe samajh hi nahi aa raha tha ki isko main kaise syntax kaise arrange karu english mein to usko maine आपने अंग्रेजी में कविता लिखी है इसके ऊपर हाँ लिखी है लेकिन अब तो सुनानी पड़ेगी बेकार है लेकिन बहुत ज्यादा नहीं वो हम लोग कहेंगे आप सुनाएंगे वो शब्दों का इधर उधर रीअरेंजमेंट कर दिया है कम ऑन द ब्लू क्विल्ट इट्स माउंटेन रेंजेस शेडोई वैलीज एंड डेलिकेट हिल्स एनवलॉप्ड द स्लीपिंग रूया इन अ वॉर्म सॉफ्ट स्वीट डार्क Yeah, you know it's a poetic kind of sentence. That's the first thing to acknowledge about it. Yeah. I was wondering, and I don't know if you, even we know this, and I'm actually not. I'm one of the few people probably who's not familiar with Palmer's work. But how marked is this in Turkish? How different is this from standard Turkish? Is I guess the first question I would want to ask before translating. You know, all I can say, I don't know a word of Turk. I I, I know several words of Turkish. <laughs> I'll tell you how. they happen to be current in urdu the young lady who told me this who gave me this her name is arzu there's several there's another lady whom i met whose name is sana so you know i found out how much turkish i know when i went to istanbul <laughs> but i don't know turkish in this sense uh what what i can say here is pamuk is known not to write uncontemporary archaic turkish Pamuk writes contemporary Turkish, which has, of course, many registers, especially in literary writing. Uh, now, the interesting thing here is, a translation a is actually a published translation, and translation c is also a published translation. It's not like the two Rangabhumis. It's a more complicated and uh, more more interesting, more engrossing story. So far as I'm concerned. Pamuk made his reputation internationally through the translations of I wish I could this morning I should have looked it up you can look it up look it up perhaps could you please translate uh, sorry type in gunner plus pamuk gunner as in g u w l e r yeah. gunner plus pamuk I just forgot to do it on my laptop in the morning but this will come up in the answer. this web page is not available oh <laughs> Let me do a try again. In that case, I'm misremembering the name even more. No, I, because this is a computer problem. If you type Pamuk plus translation, oh, it's coming. It's just slow. Uh, right. No, no, we'll get it. We'll get it. Mm. Let's try it. Machine. Okay. Let's try. Pamuk plus black book, black book. I One word. The, I think no, two words. That's the novel. I think. Yeah. 
And if we can uh, open this page. This one? Yeah, yes. The top one. Translated by? It will say somewhere. The Black Maureen Book. Freely. A novel. Maureen Freely. Translated. Yeah, yeah. Maureen That's Freely, yeah. Maureen Freely. Is that the only thing? At the bottom, does it say, does it list two translations? Yeah. <laughs> at the bottom, right at the bottom, the two editions. Yeah, you know, this, is, this, is, this makes it even more interesting. This lady whose name I remember as Gunner, and must be something different, she was the translator who brought Pamuk to international attention. She was the only translator for several years. She translated so well, and Pamuk was so good too, that Pamuk gained this tremendous international reputation. Then, in mid-career, Pamuk discovered a different translator. Mm -hmm. who is called Maureen Freely, and who is now at Warwick. Maureen Freely then not only began translating subsequent books by Pamuk, but Pamuk asked her also to retranslate the previous ones, which is a deep betrayal of the first translator. But that's how authors treat translators, many of them. He was convinced that Freely was doing a better translation, and all his work should be available in that translation. The overwhelming vote here for A proves Pamuk right, but I am in a minority. I still think that C is better than A. And I'll, I mean, obviously, it's a lost cause, so far as this room is concerned. But I'll, I'll give one or two reasons why I think C is a better translation, and why I think both C and B uh, sorry, A and C are not good translations because of the limitations of the English language. I always crib against that, and it's very ungrateful of me, <laughs> but <laughs> there it is. You know, in the first translation, first translation sounds like a paraphrase, like a summary in one third of the words. It doesn't even sound like a translation. If you compare it with B, which is the original, as close as we can get to the original, I haven't counted the number of words, but A must be less than half. What kind of a translation is it? It's not translation. It's the opposite of explicitation. It's condensation. It is being too user-friendly. It is simplifying. It's reducing. The second, the C translation, which is the earlier translation, I will not call her Gunner anymore. I misremember her name. I'm so ashamed of this. But I should have found it. You know? I, yeah. But Maureen Freely, I remember because she does translate fairly freely, <laughs> <laughs> as in the first version. It's a great name for a translator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the question to ask is, we don't know Turkish. We come close to learning Turkish because of this B version. This is as close to Turkish as most of us will ever get. That then is the original for practical purposes. How much does A think of retaining? How much does C think of retaining? How much is superfluous in Pamuk, according to A, which can be dropped? To what extent is the translator, the writer of A, version A, to what extent does she feel superior to Pamuk? to feel the right, to rewrite Pamuk drastically. These are the questions that come to my mind. And one very vital thing, even at the level of plot, at the level of what is called fact in fiction, in translation A, you don't even know whether she is sleeping. Right. Face down, I sleep word sleep to I need She is lying there. But face down itself, you know, I thought that probably she and I didn't know the gender of this person, so I thought... Ruya, Ruya is a name which means dream. Oh, okay. It's very appropriate. Mm -hmm. That's another word of Turkish, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but look, look at the C sentence. Ruya slept on her stomach in the sweet and warm darkness under the blue checkered quilt which covered the entire bed with its undulating shadowy valleys and soft blue hills. I mean, I could see the rajai on the bed. Yes, right? Up and down? Yes. Ismat ki lihaf ki type ho ra hai. There's not so much action going on there. <laughs> but it's okay, a bit well, like yes. that. Yeah, it's yeah, a bit like that. Usi tere ki lihaf hai. I'm sorry. Uh, the 
Tanok? <laughs> nice gunner. So, this is this a lot of detail. And Maureen, uh, Maureen Freely might have felt that this is too oriental, this is too ornate. It will not go into English. No? People translating into English very often have this feeling. So many translators have openly confessed, not confessed, said in public meetings, like your friend. William Radice. Oh, he's not like that. Yeah. <laughs> William Radice, translating from Bengali into English, says Bengali needs to be slimmed down in English. <laughs> slimmed down? Hmm. That's what he says. This is slimming down with the vengeance, what Maureen Freely is doing. Oriental languages are suspected of being ornate, being verbose, being whatever, and therefore Maureen Freely is doing this. And Pamuk, the author, is lapping it up with full approval. What kind of politics is this? Mm -hmm. Uh, the other thing that is common to both A and C, which Turkish does, Hindi does, other Indian languages do, and English cannot, is that Ruya and what she is doing is withheld till the end of the sentence mm -hmm. in Turkish. In English, it's disclosed right away. ハリヤガハリヤランイエスサウスケバダタイクルヤソーリティインディメンナナイトランスレーションでカムアバタイバタイアグレシブアグレシブアグレシブアグレシブアグレシブアグレシブアグレシブアグレシブアグレシブアグ
Rupert has done as well as can be done to delay the disclosure, yes. which lies under the lihaf. <laughs> <laughs> but without being unnatural, without inversion, it cannot be done seriously. Yeah. I mean, it will seem like a trick in English. In Turkish and Hindi, it comes naturally. That's the question. Well, you know, when you, and the, the reason why I didn't like C as well as you and you, Pavia liked it was that it, it actually had a lot of words, but it lost some of the cadences uh, of imagery that you got in, in some of the other translations. And I think in Hindi, there's more of a, there's, yeah, there's more uh, capacity for an image to build that way. But I also wonder if that's not something that used to be more available to us in English than is now available because of the movement toward a terser kind of utterance. And yeah. sort of moving off of that, I think I would have to see the whole rest of the freely translation in order to make this judgment, but it seems to me that it's not necessarily that she finds the original to be too flowery but, and, and is cutting it out of an aesthetic principle, but that she perhaps doesn't feel capable of of rendering it, because essentially there are two subjects in the sentence. There's Ruya, and then the quilt becomes its own subject, which is really hard to manage. And I, I felt that one of the reasons that I didn't like C is it, it is kind of clunky, both in some yeah. of the words, like lying on your stomach. Yeah, exactly. Really that ugly. is like the what? And the lying on your stomach. Lying on your stomach. That, yeah. It seems very unpoetic. Yeah, it's very sort yeah. of like. A but you know, it may sound unpoetic, especially in English, but it's such a lovely thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very poetic thing to do. It's like lost in the Radai, you are thinking something, you're lost somewhere. No, but it's so bhi rahi hai. So bhi rahi hai, lekin pehle A wale translation she was lost. Ek minute, haan, haan. So, but, so if we substituted the word belly for stomach, would it become more palatable? I think lying face down, I mean it seems like, like the original it says lying face down or stretched out and doesn't, you don't have to lie an, on any particular part, you can leave the body a little bit more out of it. But it's it just some of her word choice, and then the fact that we have to have this really awkward witch in the middle to get those two subjects to to be in one sentence. I can see why she made this choice, and I wouldn't necessarily say that it's like this this Orientalist idea. I yeah, I would say she's being soft on the reader by making all these compromises. She's being soft on the reader. She she hopes that Pamuk's readership will expand. Pamuk hopes that, and therefore is Pamuk light. That's how I look on it. It's, 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 so much is lost at the level of what Pamuk is trying to create. Atmosphere is lost. That's one big thing. A novel is not only functionality. And even functionality, we don't know whether she's sleeping. Yeah. So it seems to me, there was a question asked earlier whether the translator has a readership in mind. Both of these Western translators have a readership in mind for Pamuk. And they, they have adopted different strategies. Uh, Pamuk, almost whole, is going to be delivered by translator C. And as I said, Pamuk reduced, Pamuk light. Uh, 36, novels, uh, 36 plays the Pamuk in half, one and a half hours <laughs> in A. And I would not want to do, personally, I would never try to want to translate like A. And yet, Maureen Freely, if there were a Nobel for translators, she would have got it by now. Reputations are built in the, this kind of a translation. I mean, Umar Khayyam would be the first, uh, Edward Fitzgerald would be the first to get it, and Maureen Fee the second. <laughs> the worse the translation, the, uh, the better the translator. <laughs> I'm but sorry. When you say <laughs> I'm that, getting too that, far. Yeah. That, that really is being easy on the reader, I would like to ask what is gained by being hard on the reader? The quote, the the whole landscape of the quilt, I felt like there's a huge loss. I just like the sentence better, the structure. But you know, what, what is, is that really hard? I'll tell, can't you, you? I'll tell you what is gained. If I were to go down the path away, I would write, Ria was sleeping under a quilt. <laughs> Why not push it? Drop blue, drop this, drop that. 
That's the fact. That's the basic reducible fact. Let's get on with it. That's what I do not want to do. And what is gained is Pamuk. Is Pamuk anything like this or not? That's the question. There's so many writers in the world. I mean, it sounds like a mystery thriller. If you say, uh, Rui was sleeping under a quilt, and then a gunshot rang out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, get on with it. <laughs> so, a, a gunshot rang out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> raising <laughs> Ruya from where she had been lying down, lost to the sweet warm darkness, with a billowing gold of the blue checked quilt. She threw it off and went running to the window. <laughs> you know, you know, is it the kind of novel, Carla, it's a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> uh, alternative. Is it the kind of novel in which a gunshot will ring out on the first page? <laughs> That's the question. Is he that kind of novelist? <laughs> no, no, no. There are other Somebody novelists who do that. Through with a sword. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, the thing is, you don't know whether Ruya or the quilt is supposed to be what you focus on. It begins with the quilt. It's like Bharat Vishmi. It begins with the quilt. It builds up some suspense even within the first sentence. And then you see what is happening. Then you are introduced to a human cat. It's like that Amitabh Bachchan shot which begins with the shoes and slowly pans up to reveal his face. <laughs> yeah. That's part of the narrative strategy. How can you reduce that? I mean, is there something called art or not? <laughs> Gee, just and is it dead? Yeah. Recently, I, I, I finished the translation of the book on the, on the spiritual topic. I sent it to the ashram in Sonoma, California. Yeah. When the Babaji gave it to one of his disciples to look it over for American leadership, and, and the comment I got back very recently was, uh, Jishnu has done very hard work, but he, uh, th there are certain nuances of uh, Indian English which might be a little difficult for American leaders to either read, understand, or stay with it. In other words, he's saying, hey, Jishnu translates funny. So what? <laughs> The reader gains is an acceptability, which is why, as you said, uh, freely is so popular because it just becomes accessible to the reader, I suppose. Although a lot of the picturesqueness of the text which is translated is probably lost. You know, in Pamuk, no in, in, in Pamuk novels, nothing happens for hundreds of pages. Mm. <laughs> if, he were not, if he were not that kind of novelist, as I said, not a gunshot novelist, mm. if he were not that kind of a novelist, he would not be prized, he would not be read. Mm. That's his primary appeal. So what kind of a compromise are we? I mean, look at Snow. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> look at even uh, that uh, uh, miniature painter novel, My, uh, My Name is Red. Yeah. yeah. Look at all these novels. That's what Pamuk is. If Maureen Freely is someone else, let her go and translate a novelist uh, who writes like her. Isn't there a mismatch? That's what I'm asking. Well, wouldn't she be getting something right if she's so popular? That's that is the bottom that's line question. Quiet. That is the bottom line question, and that's why you're not getting it right, and I'm not getting it right. <laughs> 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 Aap batayye, aap iske baare mein bohut deir se shub bethe hai. I have nothing to add. I, but I agree though, I mean, there's the, the feeling of a novel like Snow is, I mean, slow, it might have been a misprint for slow in terms of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, you, I mean, if you, if, you, if you turn that into something else, then you really, it's a criminal act, right? Absolutely. I didn't want to go that far. I didn't know American law. <laughs> you know, these, these are, there's a, there's a dear friend, there was a dear friend of mine, deceased now, deceased now uh, who wrote very well on translation, Sujit Mukherjee. He has a chapter in a book called Translation as Discovery. The chapter is titled, Translation as Perjury. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> You are lying under oaths. <laughs> and that is a criminal act. But <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I sound, I feel, I don't know whether I sound obviously, but I feel so old fashioned saying these things. 
I feel as if I were talking to grandfathers. I, I feel as if I were the grandfather of Maureen Freely, <laughs> who could not render her, her any help two generations back. But if my if a translation of any foreign text gave me just A, I will not go very far with it. I will not go reading on. That I can do myself almost. Well, I think we should Jale. thank Harish and thank everybody else, including Bhavya's grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> and this was great fun. And we must ask you to come back and do this again very come soon. On. Tomorrow. <laughs> 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 thank you. No, thank you. 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 Thank you.